Welcome back to another great video. This is called Tea Time with Lady Let. It is time for us to take that journey to see what we can find in Jamaica to make some Jamaican bush tea. Let's go. Happy Independence Day, Jamaica. This video is for you. Hope you enjoy it. Oh, I'm bunch this. Mm -hmm. You see it? It's in a so big. Is it you then lure? Mm -hmm. The fire. <laughs> it is fire. What a blessed tree. Busy, busy, aka kola nut, is the fruit of kola tree, which is native to the tropical rainforest of Africa, and it is right here in Jamaica, people. It has been kept in many Jamaican homes where it is used for an antidote against poison, usually food poison and allergies. The busy powder can also be used to put on cuts to promote quicker healing. It is used also for headaches, colic, nausea, vomiting, intestinal problems, migraine, headache, can also use this busy for mental well-being, weight loss, for male impotent cancer. It also enhances metabolism. I don't know I'm great diet. Creep, yeah. Oh, you see the prettiness, they know. Oh, yes, Keep the it. pink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your great I put us on a beat, yeah, she be. Oh, mm. you can mm -hmm. um, put a um, greater now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. okay, All right, so this is the oh. one that is gratered already. Mm -hmm. And you put it in the sun. I make it shy. Okay. And when you do your beat, it and she be. Oh, <laughs> what? Show me the process. <laughs> Mata, mm, where you beat? What say? Beat. Just put it in there and beat. So it take long for do? Eh? It take long? Mm -hmm. No man easy to pound up. What you say? No, you see, they are easy to pound up when you beat young sheep. Say, look at that man. Yeah, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. Right, you see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, beat you sick, buddy. Mm-hmm. 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 Say yourself. Are you coming out with that joke? See that? So that's why you're the beauty and you have fun doing it. Wow. I make it stay in the sun and dry. Wow. You see it? Mm-hmm. More refined. Yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And you be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, so why why you drink this now? Busy. Oh, yeah, tea. Mm. Tea. So yeah. no reason, no pain, no aches. Well, they say if you have tummy poison, oh. you grate a the green one mm -hmm. and boil it and drink it with the jugs. Oh. When you have tummy poison. Okay. But if you have well if it tea now, you have it dry, mm -hmm. grate it dry, beat it and sip it like this. Mm. Mm -hmm. That looks nice. Yes, you see, it's very fine. Like Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's very fine yes. now. Yes. So, how oh, you make yours with. When you are boiling, mm -hmm. you put on the water, you boil up, mm -hmm. and throw this in a little cold water, and mix up it, throw up on it, and put it on for you, make it boil. Okay. <laughs> what you saying? I make it boil. So, you serve it black or. Oh. And you put milk in there. Some oh. somebody drink it black. Mm -hmm. Or plenty of person who drink milk, you know. Yes. Me have one cousin in drink coffee, but no throw milk in there. Mm -hmm. He didn't drink it black. Oh. But you read it when milk in there. But the father. Mm. The father. 
and you see that when you scrape off show you, you know, mm-hmm. and it grow. Oh. If you jump off now, we stay under there and it will grow. grow. And it grow. That's in a little yeah. tree, though. But no. To so not make it stay. But no. So to not use it. <laughs> to me, you use it and you jump. You take stone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't find it. No, no, under there. Mm. No, so mm-hmm. come. I want to go to the right to so so one day, I want to go to the right to go to the soccer. It is said that drinking a cup of this tea can kill the growth of some bacteria. Don't forget guys that drinking a cup of this tea will energize and strengthen your body. Did you know that drinking a hot cup of black busy will help to treat fever? Scrape it off. Mm-hmm. You scrape it off till you call off to stay like that. So scrape it off. I'm great, guys. Thank you so much. As I am not the person who's going to make this tea today because I don't think I can make it that well. So I have a special guest in the kitchen with me today. My husband. So he will be helping me out with making this tea because it is one of his, his favorite. So you should drink on this year last when you were smaller. I don't know. Yeah. 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 So what are you doing now? Mixing it out in cold water. Just that? Yes, just <laughs> I will add you more water to it. <laughs> just don't want it to color. I'll color. As you may see, the water is boiling up over it on this side, and he is. What are you gonna add to your water? Next, lemon pot. Drink this 
guys, it is boring. And it will not take. Sugar. You can use only to sweeten this too. Not that time. <laughs> yeah, that's it. What did you say? Not too sweet. Okay. It's ready to serve now. You know the benefits of this, by the way? Why are you drinking? Tastes good. <laughs> There you have it, guys. About your mother? She makes it better. Oh, she makes it better. Yes. Next time we have to go to her when we're making this video. She's an expert. That's true. What is missing? Nothing. I don't know. I just want to drink it. I just love it. I don't know. <laughs> so it's strange. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you so much hon for helping me out today on tea time for making up my tea guys it is time for a meditation our meditation will be done by peter gay it is a story of saul when saul was appointed to be king in 1 Samuel chapter 9 and chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter 9 begins by describing Saul that he was a Benjamite and he was a man of standing and he was a son of Kish. And the Bible also says that he was a handsome young man. Um, he was taller than everybody else um, in his tribe. But the Bible also says that Saul's father Kish had some donkeys and the donkeys got lost so what Kish did he sent his son Saul and the servant to go and look for the donkeys so Saul and the servant went through the hill country of Ephraim and the surrounding areas looking for these donkeys but they just could not find them so of course after searching for donkeys you're going to get tired and frustrated. So Saul began to think and Saul said, you know what? Let's, let's go back home to my father because soon and very soon he will stop thinking about the donkeys and start worrying about us. But the servant said to Saul, Look, there is a man of God who is highly respected and everything that he says comes true. Let's go and look for him and maybe he can tell us where the donkeys are. It is very important that you and I choose wisely if we can who we travel with, who our companions are. Because this servant was able to find valuable perspectives. Some of us have some traveling companions where sometimes they get even frustrated before us and instead of cheering us along, they want to give up give up on the mission they want to quit they get flustered and we travel sometimes with some people who do not understand our mission and because of that they throw in the towel easily but here the servant was able to offer valuable perspective he was able to come up with what he thought was a good solution you know what let's go and look for the man of god i've heard about him and whatever he says usually comes through so let's go and look for him and maybe he will be able to tell us where the donkeys are so that's exactly what they did so they went in search of the man of god but the bible tells us and this is so beautiful the theme is i repeat it was never about the donkeys the lord had already revealed to Samuel that he was going to anoint Saul that he was going to meet Saul so the day before Saul was in pursuit of Samuel 
the Lord revealed to Samuel that he would be dining with Saul. So he went to the chef because Saul was actually coming to that town on that day for a sacrifice. So he was actually on his way to that location when he ran in to Saul but the day before he had told the chef you know what reserve this piece of meat because I'm going to have a guest that was maybe even before the donkeys got lost my god even before we undertake some journey there are some things that are reserved for us there are some hand-picked people who the Lord has appointed and anointed to serve us there are some, 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 some spaces at some tables and some platforms, some job opportunities. There are some things that are reserved for us and we don't even know. The, our current circumstances may seem to dictate otherwise. So we may have some lost donkeys. And maybe like Saul or his servant will be getting uh, frustrated that we can't find the donkeys or wh whatever your donkeys are this morning. But it's never about the donkeys. It was never about the donkeys. So the Bible tells us that Saul and the servant were in pursuit of Samuel. And when they finally saw Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 19, uh, Saul approached Samuel and he said, Are you the seer? And Samuel said, Yes. I just love Samuel's response. Samuel didn't waste any time. He just read out everything. So 1 uh, so Samuel chapter 19 says, Um... I am the seer, Samuel replied. Go up ahead of me to the high place, for today you are to eat with me. And in the morning I will send you on your way and will tell you all that is in your heart. As for the donkeys you lost three days ago, do not worry about them. They have been found. And to whom is all the desire of Israel turned? Is it not to you and your whole family line? Saul answered, But I am not a Benjamite from the but I am not a Benjamite from the smallest tribe of Israel, and is not my clan the least of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin? Why do you say such a thing to me? And uh, you know, it's just amazing where sometimes we're getting some promotions and some opportunities, and I think the people who are appointing us have much more confidence in us than we do of ourselves because here Saul was telling him that you know um and to whom is all the desire of Israel turned if not to you and your whole family line but Saul was saying oh me no me at the least my, my clan at the least me are you sure <laughs> and there are many times that you know people will express confidence in us and our abilities or God-given talents and abilities and then you know many of us carry greatness but we don't even know that we carry greatness you, you you can be great and don't even know that you are great just because the Lord has deposited that greatness in you and many times many of the persons who are around us see it but we don't see it any at all and this is what was happening uh, to Saul when Samuel was talking to him so the word of God tells us that they had the meal but what happened the next morning was that Saul started uh, went to Samuel and Samuel told him that he was going to prophesy like the prophets and if you read the story you will get a better understanding of what took place so he started to prophesy he started when he went up with the procession of prophets he started to prophesy with them and he was anointed uh, before all israel read the story it's very very interesting but the point i want to or, or, or what i want to share with us this morning is that our lives are never in the hands of man it is always in the hands of god and it is a disservice to God for us to think that when things do not work out in our lives because a person said no we get disappointed we get frustrated when things go away sometimes we wonder if it is our own actions and maybe sometimes it is but sometimes it's divine design because here Saul left out to look for donkeys <laughs> and he came back to his hometown to his home country after being anointed by 
the prophet he came back as a prophet he started prophesying and when he was prophesying everybody was asking is who this is kiss son this is what happened to him is he no a prophet <laughs> When God is ready for you, when it is your time, it is just your time. So I just want to encourage us this morning. Whatever is happening in your life, whether it's disappointing or not, or whether you're on a goose hunt for the donkeys, it's not about the donkeys. There are many times we fail to see the greater purpose behind the no. But if we see the Lord and we trust Him, and we're reminded that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose, then we will be at peace. It is not about the donkeys. It was never about the donkeys. There's a greater purpose behind searching for those donkeys. And if you look to the Lord and not look around at the circumstances and take them at face value, you will see it. So I hope that your heart was encouraged. And may you rest in the assurance that God has plans for you to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. And as long as you and I stay in alignment, then God's good, perfect, and acceptable will will be unfolded in our lives.